to Beacons of Balance. Thank you for joining us. If you're new to the channel, thank you for joining in. It's all about balance. That's what the channel is. We live in a world of duality, right? Black, white, up, down. That's never gone away. So this channel is all about bringing ourselves, each one of us, back into balance. Because when we're like this, that's when we have all our issues and things that go on with us. So it's all about that. So we'll bring in different times, guest speakers, and we're here to share pearls of wisdom for each and every one of us to take with us to make us more this way. So thank you for being here. And this is wonderful, Joanne. My fabulous co-host. Yeah, we're both, we're both we're both fabulous. So we're so it's all about it's us. All, right? Yeah, no, it's about you. I know. It's all about you. Exactly. You guys are important to us. Exactly. It's all about love. This is what so today we have a really um, fun topic we're going to talk about. And this is about be our fun. intuitiveness because we all are intuitive. We all have our psychic abilities. And, you know, we talk about right. our gut instinct. You know, you go with your, your gut when we all really go to our gut. That's when things, it's the truth. So... Exactly. We're going to talk about all these different, you've heard about clairvoyance and clear audience. So Joanne's going to, the Claire's. this is about the Claire's yeah. today. <laughs> this will be fun. This is laid back. We don't have any guests. It's just the two of us talking, having fun. So think of yourself as a powerful radio antenna. I think that's the best way I could describe it early, right? We're, hey, we're antennas, right? Take the time to really see what senses that you're most keen at. There's some people that are, they hear things more than they can visualize something in the future. So we're going to cover six of those, Claire's. And Arlene, um, well, I'll, would you like to clairvoyance? Yes, clairvoyance. So what is clairvoyance? It's having clear seeing and someone that sees through what's called our third eye. So it's right between here. It's right between your eyebrows. And um, that's where we see things from. And so right. what could happen is you could have flashes of light, um, images or something that ha it's like watching a movie film in front of you, right? Shaping that's into, and it could be looking at the past, present or future. So that's kind of a, a clairvoyant type of, and I think we all hit on these at different times in our lives, right, Joanne? Exactly. So many people have visions of something happening and they think, oh, no, they second guess themselves and then they get home only to find out, you know, something happened that really did happen. So right. second guess yourself, you know, we're more powerful than we realize. We're very guys, powerful right? beings. Yes. So, so yeah. And yeah. With the clairvoyance. So it's that suddenly you just see something like an image. Right. Some people call it the sixth sense. Right. You know, they just feel like something is going to happen or they have a vision that there is going to be an earthquake and then uh, something it transpires. Is so, that? Yeah. And then there's clear audience, which I'll cover. Now, how many times have you been walking around and you, it's almost like you, you can hear someone, you hear messages. And I know I have to be really careful with this, Arlene, because voices they're gonna lock you up right right away they go right there they go to the judgment but um clear audience here i'm telling you this is the best way that would make it sound like we're not crazy when i when you a lot of people when they go when they sleep they'll dream about a deceased loved one that crossed over and the way that many of those deceased loved ones will communicate with you is to clear audience it's almost like a telepathic communication you might not see their their lips moving, but they're communicating through thought. And you know, we've taught this a million times early that, that your thoughts are more powerful than you realize. Right. right. So I know when angels appear to many people, they communicate telepathically or it's clear audience. Um, so yeah, it's that's one of the clairs that's very important. So you want to bring up some so, of our clairs. You have to well, bring up some of our clairs. I Oh my gosh! Just last week, Arlene, what happened? <laughs> we we, we were, were we were in between. We, uh, yeah, things. we were record, and Left. in between, I had of course the computer on, the volume was on, and Joanne had hers on, but we walked away because yeah. you know we had we were waiting in between, so we didn't shut down everything, and mm -hmm. I was on my couch, on my other computer doing something. 
And my husband, you know, right. I'm at the house recording. Joanne's at her house. And my husband had left. He told me he was going out. And I'm sitting on the couch and I heard a man's voice. And I said, oh my goodness. So I got up and I said, did he come back? But it was like a quick, because I knew he was going for a little while. So I, oh, I actually went to the stairs upstairs where I go, hello, are you there? <laughs> and I opened up the basement door. Hello, are you? <laughs> and oh my God. Nothing. And I thought, oh, well, I'm losing it or whatever. But I distinctly heard like three words. And then when we came back out and I said to Joe, before we start, I said to Joey and I said, oh my God, I said this. And she goes, yeah, I heard it. I go, nice. And I thought you left your TV on. Yeah. And I didn't want to eavesdrop because I thought, I didn't know what you were watching, you know? But no, it wasn't. It was so distinct. That's why. Uh, well, there's somebody that, oh, and let's preface this. I'll preface it by saying that happened. But in the morning, my husband said he heard somebody. Wait, he heard somebody. It wasn't a man's voice, but he heard somebody. Awesome. And I, how many times people I've talked to, you know, along with different clients who said, you know, they have literally avoided our oh, told them swerve right or swerve left or take this street instead of going straight ahead and they avoided you know a c catastrophic accident yeah so i think out mm -hmm. of the clears maybe some of them happen more for some than others but i think the clear audience one happens for i think everybody really yeah like you're saying to hear that or whatever you know and yeah there are so many accidents that have been avoided that um, somebody will hear like a loud it's like in their head, but they hear it. I hear Don't stop. That. Stop. Yeah. Put your brakes. Yeah. Or leave the house now. I mean, I've heard countless stories where a voice guided them. You yeah. know, even a war during the Vietnam War. A friend of mine that fought in Vietnam heard a voice, you know, to go through a certain route. And all, and he's the only one that went that way, and the rest of his troops were killed. So... Well, I got chills to that one. The voice of God? Is it your guardian angel? You know, we don't know. So, but on that point, let's say also, because people say there's different voices. And how about people that hear voices and they're like, um, as we know, and Joanne could verify this also, our angels, our spirit guides, whatever, you know, we put labels on, who knows what they're called, but whatever, our highest self, is only going to give positive, loving, supportive messages and it's to help and it's for the highest good. If you Perhaps. get a voice saying, go pick up that gun and go shoot it, yeah, no, that's that's not from the realm. It's I'm glad you brought this up or, you know, I had a client that, yeah. she, said, she goes, Archangel Gabriel is telling me I have to sell everything and move to Vegas. And I'm supposed to, you know, send energy to blurs. And I'm like, how about that one? But, you know, somebody what to do right or she went anyway um she had just won two million dollars in a lawsuit so she had a lot of money to live on she lost all of that money within two years two and a half years god. became homeless and she actually called me asking for four hundred dollars oh my god what'd she do with the no. money she, she lived in vegas while she gambling <laughs> angel gabriel told her she was to work in the keno area you know playing keno every day and flicking energy to the gamblers and i'm like joyce i'm like, i don't know about that one you know but I, you can't change anybody that was her truth yeah her perception that it was archangel Gabriel. i don't think and probably will get get retribution on this one people yeah. doing gamb you know because i i do i it's in my family gene that runs but anyways i do like to uh <laughs> to dabble but yeah, we all play with I, it. I do it as an entertainment. I only take so much, but you know, but I just go on and I, I mean, go on and try to to bring the energy, saying, "Come on!" It, and you know what? It's a low vibration. The people that are there in that whole arena, you know, they're desperate people. It's it's um, like a, an addictive type of thing. So exactly. I think for the highest good, that wouldn't that wouldn't be there. I so mean, what Arlene said. It's like, what is the message? Is it positive? Then, you know? Yeah, it'll only be loving. I'll kill somebody or do something crazy. Yeah, no, those aren't. It's always from the high. And you always ask for the highest good. And, and 
you know, let's touch on, I mean, spirits that come in or whatever, and um, they're going to give us the loving things. And if they're not from that loving realm, if you tell them to get lost, I don't care which way you say it, be gone, do that, whatever, sage. They have, There's a, a universal law, right, Joanne, that they have to honor and they they leave you alone. And I've had that happen in my life. I've, so, I've witnessed it. Exactly. Many light workers, you know, so... I've witnessed it. Well, yeah. So that's another way of checking in where, where is it coming from? Exactly. Always listen to the message. So, uh, and where it's coming. Right. So Arlene, then there's Claire Cognizant. No, did he and, have one after? Did we cover that? We're comments? just on Claire. Oh, wait. You're still on Claire. Well, we just finished Claire Audience. So you want to go into oh, Claire? Oh, Claire. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot where we were. Clear cognizance. We're having human. a clear knowing. Um, someone has information or knowledge of something um, that he or she doesn't actually know. Thoughts come through like out of nowhere, right? Popping into one's mind. And uh, you're given information um, about something that mm -hmm. might happen um, in the in the near the future. future or something. Yeah, something that... Um, so some people call these psychics, which I don't care for that term. I just, I picture this lady with a, you know, turban on her head with a ruby stuck on her third eye. But um, intuitives, intuitives have a clear cognizance. Yeah. Uh, so, you know. I, I have a lot of this. It's just because people used to come into my mm -hmm. shop and they used to want me to do readings for them. And I, I you know, well, I the ability, you know, if I chose to do that, I could, but I chose not to. Um, but it's like I had a knowing it's like energetically, and Joanne, you get this too, you know, I, I, the energy, you could just feel it. And it's right. like you get the sense. The exactly. know, the, it's a knowing sense. Good example, Arlene, is when you go to a party and there's someone there and is, you don't know why you feel the way you do, but you want to stay away from that one person in the corner. You never met them, never spoke to them, but something tells you that inner cognizance is kicking up. Like just stay on this side of the room. Don't go near that man. I know. I I, I always, you know, yes, oh, something but... happened. I I get that a lot. I get that a lot. And and then what? I go I go into like a judgment. Like, well, why do I feel that way? I don't know this because. person. I don't know anything about them. But I wonder why. But the vibe <laughs> they're putting off. That and if you we're empaths, let's face it, Arlene, or we yeah. wouldn't be doing this work. We're very sensitive. Yeah. To energy. Yeah. So if somebody's putting on a kind of weird vibe. It just. And then the other the other part of that is then you just meet somebody you want to go up and just hug them and, and exactly have to say oh like my you're god you're here somebody in the crowd and he just I want to be your friend <laughs> I get your, I get more, I get more of that rather than the other but you know or children that just are attracted to you and they come up to you and they don't even know why it's like oh yeah I gosh. like them when they just smile at you and that. That's another oh. thing for our audience to listen. Listen to the, I mean, the little ones, the ones coming in. Well, all oh, right. the on. babies, they have so much, they just came from the realm. They have so much knowledge and wisdom. Put them in boxes. Like you're going to be in this religious box. You're going to be in this political box. Don't talk to this person because she believes it. And we just mess these kids up. Let them just be pure love. Exactly. Wow. And I always and say to people, talk to them because they have that. If they talk about imaginary friends and that, you know, they're seeing spirit. They I was just so I was laughing at my grandson yesterday, Sage. He was over yesterday. I had to watch him. And he says, Gammy, he, he was insistent that I did. And he watched this video. I swear to God, Arlene, we had to watch this 10 times in a row. He wanted me to play Aerosmith. <laughs> and it had to be a very specific recording and it was um, honoring Howard Stern's birthday. And Slash, remember Slash, the crazy guitarist? Okay, yeah. And he was playing Dream On. You know the song Dream On? Sage has that song memorized, and he can hit those high notes. He's three years old, but it's like he's no Play it again, Gammy. Play it again. Oh, my God. I think he was a rocker from another lifetime. Yeah. Sorry. That's yeah, the subject. Slash. He gets so, Slash is coming on. I'm like, oh, my God. Where That's another coming? subject we'll be talking about, the reincarnation. Old, old. The ones coming back. Say, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm really sad today. Can you play a sad song? I'm like, like what? And I'm thinking Sesame Street. What could Se Sesame Street has nothing sad? He goes, No, play Dust in the Wind. <laughs> what? Yeah, Dust in the Wind from the seventies. Yeah, these kids coming in today love me. It's very dear. Very love. needed. Love. So anyway, so going back to so clear cognizance, having that, you just know, you know something, but you don't know how you know it. Yeah, know it exactly. And then a lot like, of blows you your... needed to do this podcast. Yeah, and then it blows your socks off because then when it comes to fruition and you see it and you go, oh, I get right. to know it. <laughs> and sometimes it comes in a different way or it changes midstream, but you're still there. You know, things can shift and change. I never thought I'd be doing with this. You know, doing this with you, Arlene, in a no. million with my crazy. Well, I did years ago when we knew each other. I had, I always had the sense that you and I would be work doing, I mean, we did work together. But we did. We always were connected yeah, from the time but, we met. But uh, I thought, you know, we'd really be doing um, something together to build this. Because we know how to have fun when we do this, you know? And, that's, and it's all about F-U-N. If it's not F-U-N, yeah. it's F-U-N. It's L-O-B-E and F-U-N. <laughs> and you and I know how to make, we, we can make, we have fun wherever we go. Oh my God, all the road trips we used to do, Thelma and Louise, they would call us, you know? And it's about lifting each other. Like I always said, it's about lifting each other up. One and, another. Um, I, I think, you know, one of my roles, because I just talked to somebody yesterday and she was very, very like down, very, uh, I could feel it coming through the phone. Yeah. And you know, going through a lot. she got off, she was laughing. Exactly. We know she how to was change. laughing. And change. I said, oh, thank God. Yes. That's your gift. <laughs> I was like, thank God, thank you, whoever, you know, thank you, you shifted it. <laughs> right. We pull people up from the depth. Yeah. All right, so what's the next one? Let's talk about clairsentience. So clairsentience is all about the feeling, someone who can feel information. I, I've known people, in fact, I've done this myself, where we've called in archangels in a big ballroom, and we could literally go up and feel a column of energy. It's it, bananas, where people feel, you know, something being placed in their hands, um, but it's it's all about feeling. So have you ever had that, Arlene, where you can actually feel something in a room? Yeah, yeah. Probably not as much as the other ones, but yeah, I have. And some people have anxiety attacks, you know, where they feel something or they feel a, a, a dark presence, you know, in a room if they've been around, a, especially if you've been in a bar or a cafe. I always say, hey, light worker or a cafe. I always say, hey, you know, that light worker, uh, you're sensitive. So if you go in a place like a bar where it's dense energy, it's almost like I call it the flame, the moth to the flame, flame to the moth syndrome. They see your light and they're just. Oh, they they're go, drawn to it. Well, yeah, going back to that, like when I had the store, it that first year when I opened, I was like, oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, you were oh, like, oh, weren't you next to a bar or something or? I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. But, no, I had every walk of life come yeah. in that store, including, and I say, I, I got satanic and demonics. Yeah. And it's funny because they would come in mm -hmm. and others that were there, you know, would turn around and look at them and be like, ah. <laughs> and I just smiled and I'm like, okay, what if they got something from walking into your shop, whether they realize it or I not. I would talk to them, and they, but they left because yeah. like, the light would repel them. They couldn't stay in that environment. Exactly. Um, so we, yeah. were, I realized then I was protected and I was fine with it. You know. Exactly. And the one thing I always tell you know people that are healing facilitators, you always should put a circle grid of protection around you when you always. Too many do not do that. And they think they're giving their energy to the client. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is why so many of the healing facilitators are sick. Well, some of them do. They expend their energy. They, it, it's, a, like, um, it's, it's a circle. I always say it's like the infinity sign. It's a good yeah. You have to keep doing it back and forth like this. You should feel. You get it. You understand. But um, I'm just blown away at how many, especially the ones that are just starting out. You know, they don't understand that you need to protect yourself when you're working on something. And I just have to share this. Anybody that says, I am a big healer. I am the... Oh, 
We're conduits. You haven't healed anybody. We're conduits. It's just like when you see psychic mediums, the ones that, you know, the ones that are really gifted and good at it, they don't have to advertise. So the, exactly. the signs that you see psychic, you know, $10 come in. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, no, 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 I 100% word of mouth. And those I are out. gypsies that go around. Then they try to sock you for thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. But hey, you know, oh, I see you have cancer all through your body, but for $250. For... <laughs> No, they want thousands, and I'll burn these candles for you. Well, that happened to me in Bridgeport, Connecticut, early when I still lived in Connecticut. No, that's giving. You know what you do with that? You're giving your power away. Exactly. So it's against the law, actually. Yeah. But oh, talk about feelings. So I remember. So another incident in the store. It was like a Saturday, and this man comes in all in black. Oh, geez. Black okay. shirt, black pants, but I could. Talk about hearing, I feel uh, like this this music going like a dirt, like uh, <laughs> he walks in. I knew there was something to him. I couldn't put my finger on it. And then he goes, I'm looking for Michael. <laughs> I go, okay. Like Archangel Michael? <laughs> yeah, Archangel. He wants something with Michael. So I'm showing him things and nothing was good enough. Nah, nah, nah. And I'm like, all right, well, just walk around. It, if it's something here, you'll be attracted to it. You know, I'm right. not going to, I don't sell you anything. You just get attracted to whatever. Yeah. So then he finally picked up a couple of things. He comes over to the register and he goes to me, <laughs> this cracks me up because people do that. He said, do you believe in angels? What? And, Duh. Oh, I don't even have an angel shop here. I don't believe it. Duh. I don't. So all of a sudden out of his pocket, he whips out a white cow and puts it up to his neck. He was a priest. I was going to ask you. It's like he a was a priest, and I thought, but it was really funny because there was this energy. Around. And guess what? You know who he was? He did exorcisms, and he was a big honcho in the state that did exorcisms. And he used to go around with the uh, Warrens. I don't know if you remember the Warrens from Connecticut. They were, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So he went, and I'm like, oh my god. I mean, that's to me, it was just dealing with dark stuff. I was like, nah, I can't go there. Oh, and I was telling him about my angel circles he saw and he goes and he he looked at me see and he tried to in, induce fear he said to me well you better be aware of what you're working with why do they go down that road I, and I looked at him I go so this is me I'm like excuse me what do you think I go <laughs> now I said I bring in the light I say a prayer of protection we're fine and there's the door he, he backed off he did he backed off and he left I can't tell you how many times I was oh my god ostracized almost from my town because you know there was an article about me where the angels appeared to me oh. my church these new age books out and they don't appear to any that was only in the bible and I'm like this is my church that I belong to so they said but we'll forgive you if we come and pray the rosary with us every Tuesday and <laughs> Wow. This is why people are leaving in the mass numbers error. We have to get out of judgment. I mean, it's a, it's and a. I'm not saying all churches are bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that's what I went through. It was a judgment. And even all the different priests of all the different denominations got together to, in the newspaper. Yeah. So a lot with this. Yeah. So, well, we, we do the judgment. And, you know, and it's whatever, good, bad, and everything. And, you know, that's what the channel said also. See your darkness out of your light. We have it in all of us. And it's it, always making choices and come from a place of love, from the heart. That's why I always tell people, you've got to knock this judgment stuff off, guys. It's just not good. Think, all right. So, Arlene. And, yep. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> Gustav. <laughs> This is funny because it has G-U-S, and that was my father's name was Gus. Oh, yeah. Augustine, his name was Gus. Clear Gustans. And it's a having having clear table. <laughs> so it could taste. Chocolate. I'm sorry. I someone, shop. someone could taste. Huh? Someone could taste something that isn't really there. For example, someone tastes chocolate. But he or she is not actually eating chocolate. Now, this one I have a lot of because I think this is a story of my life. See, I don't eat, but I think about stuff and then I put on 10 pounds. And I think because I'm, I'm I know. experiencing it. Our bodies are the same early. We just like look at somebody eating a pie and we put the five pounds in. Well, there's, you know, there is some truth to that. So I don't deny it. And now after reading this clear goose since I think that's true. Mm -hmm. But Real it also long. goes, isn't that, it's just not taste, but it's also smelling. Yes. Smelling. 
So this is very important because when you smell, you know, you're thinking about a person or you're, you know, someone's just crossed over, passed over and you're, you can't, you know, like let's use your mother's name as Rose. So you have right. a Rose come in, you know. So. Well, actually, are that clear aliens? Oh, uh, what? Yeah. Oh, that's is that the next one? <laughs> we were so distracted by all that food. Oh, my God. Forget, oh. folks, what I just said. No, clear and good. Gusto. Claire Gustin's is about the taste. It's about tasting. Taste something, right? You taste. And the last one is Claire Aliens. That sounds so weird, doesn't it? It sounds like alien. Yeah. They're aliens. But that's when people can smell things. And you've known Arlene. We've done, I, we've, how many times have you and I meditated together with groups? I smell get, a lot of smell roses, you know, and some people would think, oh, Mother Mary came in or whatever we're, if you smell a cigar and you think, oh, my, my father must have just walked in because he smoked that type of cigar and I'm smelling it. So that's what that is. Clear, clear Aliens is all about the smell. The smell. Yeah. I've had that happen quite a bit. You smell a certain perfume. So how many times that you smell a certain perfume that um, maybe, remember Evening in Paris? Oh, God. That's going way back. We're showing our age now. Disgusting. Remember Evening in Paris, that cheap Just perfume? That. There's, there's a... Um... Oh, catalog. Oh, the Vermont Country Store. Oh, the Vermont Country Store. They have all that. Oh, Vermont Country Store, and you could get evening in Paris. <laughs> but a lot of people would smell like, you know, perfumes that were going way back from the 60s, and then they knew that their mother or grandmother was in the room. Especially lavender is a big one, you know, where people sense their grandma coming in. They smell her. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. So that's pretty interesting. But Arlene, of all the Claire's, what's our favorite Claire? I don't know, Joanne. What is it? Claire's. <laughs> we're, we're, we're both eclairs. <laughs> we're both eclairs. Yep. We're the um anyway, This yeah. was fun. So we don't take any. Go through them quickly again. Just it, just go down the names of them and just. Okay. So the first one we talked about was clairvoyance. You know, that's having yep. that vision. You you feel something is going to happen, and then lo and behold, it does. Right then. Their audience is when you hear something and it could be music it could be a voice and then clear cognizance is just having that clear knowing you that just knowledge. know that you're going to do this podcast you can't explain it you just know you're going to have that angel shop and then there's the clear sentience which is um feeling you know a lot of sensation think of sensation, sensation. Yeah. how many times early we feel like somebody like stroking our arm uh -huh. or, yeah you know, if those God bumps or you feel a feather, you know, across your face. Um, then the Claire Gustins, which is all about the food. That's our, we love food. We love our food, Arlene. <laughs> God, I miss We're I, I just thought days we could just go to Milford and yeah, go to the restaurants and get whatever we want. Well, you're in, you're in an area of good rest, please. You have the best out there. It's in 400 restaurants in Naperville. They say you can eat out every night and still never get through the whole year. So dangerous for people like us though and then and there's the last one the where aliens is about the smell people that smell I, they, I wonder why it is called alien i wonder what the aliens are. i mean the other ones make sense i would say claire what is um oh i would say claire old factory that claire I, I wonder that word it's like alienating somebody but i didn't make these words up you know uh, i wonder where because mm. But yeah, well, that's smell things. That's your nose. That's that's olfactory. So, yeah. Maybe it's so. These are all to help you um, <laughs> if you're having these happen to you. That um, there's a reason, and it's true, and it's actual. Right. Everything is satisfactual. <laughs> oh God, she's gonna go into song and dance. Oh, oh my! Go what a run I need to go. Plenty of sunshine heading our way. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Oh, I used to sing that at my circles. Hey, I told you we have fun, right? We always have fun. Well, that's another story, and I'll share. But now I'm thinking about eclairs. <laughs> that's another story that when I had my circles, and yeah. I would sing that, and we had there were only a couple guys that would come, but it was open to anybody. So right. this one night. These three young guys came and won't really curly here and that. 
So I did the whole thing, you know, the prayer, the meditation, and then we end it with, um, I would end with everybody looking at each other's eyes around the circle. Kumbaya and moment. We, we end it with zippity doo da. One guy that used to come, Bob, he would never sing. And I said, I don't care about voice. It's it's just about, because that's part of toning, you know, that, huh. which is, and uh, and one woman that used to attend, she got me this bluebird that sang zippity doo da. So oh, I, pa- I would pass it to Bob and he would put it on a show, you know, he, so this particular night, though, he sent it down the line, and the cute, the this young guy with curly hair was holding it. Yeah, and I'm seeing it's a but he do, and I'm looking, I'm observing people, I'm looking around, I'm looking at these three guys. Oh. I go, they must think I'm a real whack. This place is nuts. Who's I will never see, them. I will never see them again. So yeah. we finished, and I said, does anyone have anything to share about the group or whatever they saw or felt or you know, right? He, and he was like white almost. He said, oh my God. He said, my grandfather wrote that and sold that to Disney. Whoa. Are you kidding? Where to God. And I'm sure to this oh. day, my um, somebody he, hears this. I think he still talks about that. that what are the odds? I mean, seriously. I mean, everybody was, we were like this, like, and I just said to everybody, I said, see, see what happens. What movie was that from? Was it like Song of the South or something? Song like of the South, yes. And well, it was I don't even so... know where I got that from. It just... Grandfather wrote that and sold the lyrics to Disney. That is Obviously, his grandfather crazy. was there for him that night. Yeah. yeah Isn't that cray-cray? I mean, I can't make this... Odd of him. Uh, that's that's a, a really cool story. Art. That's a crazy story. Why would I make that up? I mean, it's kind that's of... A, that's amazing. You were just blown away. And see, and, and you were just having to just love. down him holding the bird and me sitting. It's like, what? Oh my God. So, anyways, well, well this was fun as always. We always know. I always have a good laugh with you. Or that's why I love you so much. You're just the best. Well, I love you too. We're cut from the same cloth. We are. We're from the same. <laughs> we're all planning. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so, everyone, thank you. Thank you uh, for thank you. watching, hearing. Uh, yeah, listening to us for those on the podcast, listening, and as always, um, be the wonderful beacons of light that you are. Send send it out into the universe to touch each one of us and out into the cosmos because we're we're right. intergalactical with all the other planets and star systems out there. We're all connected. We're all one. Uh, right. We need we need this to happen. And remember to subscribe and like, leave comments. And, yes, um, important. And come back and see a lot it. that goes into making this podcast. A lot. And thank you, Victor, always in the background. Yes, Victor Angel, thank you, honey. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Victor. You're the best. Oh, my Lord. We'll have you on here, too. Yes. Okay. So, I'm going to go have an eclair, right? Go have that eclair. I'm going to have that right now. <laughs>